Yeah, so uh, this is your last section. Huh? This is your last section. Um, yes, now what we are going to discuss is the electrical system, right? So automobile electrical system, uh, you, we, I know you guys have already learned about uh, some of the sections we are going to discuss here. Um, and some actually you uh, learned more than what I'm going to explain here. So hopefully that will be useful again. So uh, if I come back to this, right? If I come back to this, uh, the things uh, we have discussed so far, right? The, uh, all the things actually what we're going to discuss is automotive electrical system, the sub circuits of the electrical system, charging circuit and uh, charging circuit and the battery mainly we're going to discuss and fuses, relays and wires. Those are the main components we're going to discuss now. Okay, so uh, when we discuss about this automotive electrical system, uh, one thing you all have to understand is uh, one thing very clear. So automotive electrical system is the security of the automobile uh, itself. So that means uh, the key our key actually controls the electrical system right so if there is any way to over or bypass the electrical system without the key at that time vehicle can actually run okay so in addition to that uh, this uh, electrical system the modern electrical systems used in the vehicles are actually uh, known as a earth electrical system right so it's a vehicle's body actually used as one of the negative one of the terminals or so negative or the ground is actually uh, is the vehicle body so that eliminates a completely another wire but uh, some time ago this was not the case sometime in like 50s 40s the 60s early 60s also uh, it was not the case uh, there were vehicles which actually had two both wires that means negative and positive both are going to each components by doing this it can actually eliminate the use of wires it will reduce the weight especially nowadays comparing how many electrical components uh, included in a vehicle and um, uh, and uh, yeah sorry um, and um, and uh, yeah it called, reduces the cost so these are very beneficial that's why uh, earth return system is actually used in the modern vehicles. So uh, modern electrical vehicle system is very complicated, right? Very complicated, somewhat similar to what you can actually see here, right? This is a very good representative of representation of the uh, automobile electrical uh, system nowadays. So it's comprised with uh, it's not a single, even though it's a single system, it's not a single circuit. Uh, it's actually comprised of a lot of other small sub circuits that comes into, uh, uh, come into, uh, then or becoming the main electrical system, right? So if you look at these electrical circuits, basically we can see about few uh, systems. First one is the starting system where you start and the engine to start, right? Next, the second one is charging system where we actually use to charge our battery or our reservoir, right? Next one is the powertrain electrical system. So powertrain electrical system includes this battery, uh, the engine and the gearbox. So everything related to that electrical system actually comes through or controls through this electrical circuit. So this is what our security system also included in, right? So charging system is running as soon as the electrical system or this powertrain electrical system turned on, right? So when we turn on the key, starting system, first thing it actually turned on is this powertrain electrical system, right? then it goes to the starting system and crank the engine right so up to the operating uh, operational speed for engine to run it by it itself then as soon as it does that the it's turn off the uh, starter motor then the engine is run by itself so once it actually started to run by itself the charging system and all the other systems become live right 
So this powertrain electrical system is controlling the everything related to the engine and the powertrain, or engine and the uh, transmission and all the other uh, related components. So its uh, main responsibility is to actually distribute the electricity for the electric engine components, such as fuel pumps, cooling pans, spark plugs, and uh, generate high voltage. So they, this was done by this powertrain electrical system. So uh, lightning, lightning system is a separate one. So all these uh, headlights, reverse lights, the illuminations and everything is another one. And we have an accessory system. That means the, all the additional components, air conditioning, radios, GPS, signal sliders, all these actually get electricity separate. So, So uh, one uh, main thing you have to understand, you guys have to understand is this positive terminal. The positive terminal, the electricity from the positive terminals comes up to a uh, common point and divide into these uh, sub circuits, right? These sub circuits. That's what we call as the fuse box, right? Fuse box. The fuse box is the junction box also. It's actually the uh, divide all the power into the other sections. You can. Right? very hard to create see here this is the fuse box here right so that's what uh, the fuse box actually does so all the component uh, the electric power main electricity or the positive terminal goes into the uh, fuse box itself okay so if you look at the electrical circuit of the starting uh, uh, starting system so I know you guys already know about this, so I will go very bit faster. So basically what actually happens is it's using a relay system to turn on the starter motor solenoid, which then uh, actually connect the main electrical line from the battery to the uh, starter motor, which in turn, uh, turn the starter motor. So what actually happens is the positive uh, current from the fuse goes up the ignition switch. So when we turn on the ignition switch, right? When we turn on the ignition switch, this uh, this one closed, right? This connection over closed, and then the uh, electricity pass through a starter relay right starter relay so in this case it's actually act as a neutral safety switch a neutral safety switch means in some vehicles there's a uh, additional safety switch involved to avoid this uh, vehicle starting in a gear so if the vehicle parked or in the neutral position only the vehicle starter motor will be turned on right to turn starter motor will be turned on so what actually happens is the starter relay sends the power and that power is delivered up to the starter motor solenoid. So once the solenoid actually turned on, so the entire solenoid energized means this uh, switch will be closed, right? Closed means the power will transfer through. When power is transferred through this, right? These two terminals are connected. So the this huge line, this large line, that means this is actually a low resistant uh, line. The reason for having this is for starting or cranking a gear motor, start engine, a starter motor required around three, 300, 200 amps, right? 300, 200 amps for like very small amounts, like second or two, the battery has to give. So battery has two things. The one is voltage, it's still 12 volts, but um, it, it draws like 300, 400 amps for very small amount of time, right? So that since that amount of electricity could not be sent through these lines or through our ignition switch, that's why we actually use a secondary uh, circuit to actually turn on the starter the solenoid. Right, turn on the starter solenoid. If we look at the starting whole starting procedure, is first we turn on first we turn on the key. Once we turn on the key, it's provide the electrical system to all the uh, systems, right? Electrical power to the whole system. Then uh, it energizes the engine compartment. That means the electricity is actually provided into the engine or the powertrain controls, right? 
then uh, while this is actually happening engine heat system if it is a diesel vehicle the engine need to be heated so that uh, heat plugs will be or blow plugs will be uh, energized or if it is a petrol or a diesel both vehicles actually uh, has to be primed so the fuel pump will turn on and the system will uh, be getting uh, the fuel system will be pressurized then only once we turn uh, crank the engine uh, everything comes up to that so for all these things it takes like one or two seconds right one or two seconds everything will be completed within seconds so that's why we actually don't feel this when we are actually doing or starting the vehicle so uh this is actually showing this the high current circuit and the low current circuit or the secondary circuit and the primary circuit of this uh, so the secondary circuit sends the high voltage primary circuits actually control the secondary circuits that's what we actually discussed earlier so the advantage or the requirement of this is to avoid this voltage drops due to high resistance in the small wires and if we have like since this high voltage has to be flown above has to be drawn through these wires if we had to use these high voltage wires it's actually inconvenience to uh, use it in the normal in the star key switch and everything so that's why the convenience is one of the main reasons for having this sort of a uh, system so if you look at the starter motor, right? I know that uh, we have discussed about the starter motor again and again, so I'm not going to go through it, uh, discuss again, uh, because we we'll have the practicals also and the practical videos are also available. So you guys should go and watch that. But um, you have to remember like, what are the two types of starter motor? If someone asks you to draw a starter motor and show the, how it's actually, uh, what are the parts and everything, you should be actually able to do that, right? You should be able to do that. Uh, so that's why I actually asked the question here. So next we move into the charging circuit. So charging circuit's main function is to actually uh, keep the battery, right? Keep the battery charged at all times, right? So one thing you all have to remember, the main reason for having the battery is, right? Um, for the, uh, keep, um, giving the power necessary for starting the vehicle, right? Starting the vehicle. That's why we actually have this battery. So, the uh, purpose of the charging circuit is as long as we as soon as we turn on the engine right as soon as we turn on the engine bringing the battery up to the uh, optimum level again so i told you earlier the batteries actually have Yeah, so as I told you earlier, batteries actually don't have that much of um, energy there. So it's around, uh, I, I will go, we'll go back to that later. It's actually like we call it as ampere hours. So ampere hours, if it is 100 ampere hour ba battery, if it actually drone like 300 amperes, right? 100 ampere hours and uh, 100, 300 amps means we have to divide 100 ampere hours by 300. So that's one third, one third of 100, like right? that 33 hours. So that fast, these batteries actually going to uh, draw away. So to bring them back to the, bring it back to the optimum condition, optimum charge condition is why we use the charging circuit. The second purpose of the charging circuit is to generate electricity, right? Generate electricity to use for uh, to use in the vehicle's applications but that's the ignition systems and uh, all the other appliances running so for all these things electrical charging system should generate enough electricity so you can actually see this in some cases you can actually see this when the electrical system could not actually uh,
electrical system could not actually keep up actually keep up with the um, uh, sorry charging system we actually could not keep up with the electrical demand of the vehicle so at that time when electrical demand is actually higher than the uh, electrical power electricity provided by the uh, alternator or the charging system itself what actually happens is vehicle started to actually slow down i mean the engine rpm will be slowed down because of the high load and uh, if you turn on the lights or something you should be able to see the performance is actually lower than the other so as a result of this in some cases especially uh, in uh, vehicles such as petrol vehicles if the battery is also very poor right if the battery is also not in very good condition if, uh, in case uh, high electrical energy um, demand is there in such cases the vehicle could have uh, 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 the vehicle performance, the engine performance could also be affected because of this. So the charging circuit is very important. It should be in top-notch condition. So the charging circuit also includes the battery. So battery should be in very good condition. In order to keep the battery in good condition, charging circuit should be working very well as well. Uh, so the main components of the electricity uh, charging system is the alternator, which we, oh, which you guys learned in uh, practical. So again, I'm not planning to go through that again and again, as I told you earlier. Uh, so today's uh, my main expectation is to discuss about the rest of the electrical system, like uh, wirings and what sort of how to select a wiring, what sort of wiring are there, that sort of things we, I need to actually discuss today. Uh, so alternator also, we have discussed about this, so we can discuss again in another session. Uh, yeah, we'll go through the battery part. So as a, I told you earlier, battery is very important in a vehicle. So uh, the battery's main purpose is to actually provide the necessary power to start a motor, right? Start a motor. So I think you might have seen there are vehicles with 24 volts and 12 volts vehicle. Uh, if do anyone know why there are 12 volts and 24 volts vehicles are there? What is the reason for that? Anyone? Okay, so the reason for these 12 volts and 24 volts is again starter mode, right? So when uh, these vehicles like uh, like lorries and buses, since they have a higher, bigger engine capacity in order for them to be turned and turned over and start or to be cranked, the motor has to have a, a higher capacity. So to get that higher capacity, they have to be higher voltage is needed. So that's why they were 24 volts. So 24 volts is twice 12 volts. So two batteries can be used, right? Two batteries can be used, uh, that's a convenience. So the reason for 24 volts is the, bat the starter motor of these vehicles need higher voltage in order for the cranking of a larger in displacement engines, large displacement engines. That's why uh, 24 vehicles are available. So since the motor is 24 volts and the ground is actually shared, right? So as a result of that, all the components are running as 24 volts component because it's not actually changing much with the wiring and everything because 24 and 12 volts, uh, if the current is not changing the wire, the difference between the wiring is uh, very main, minute, okay? Uh, so as I uh, discussed, the main purpose of the battery is to actually provide the electricity for starting the engine, for cranking the engine, not anything else, not to be like a reservoir or else. So all of these functions are added benefits of this, but the main function of uh, the battery is that. 
so uh, you know how the battery is it's actually having these cells sort of things the cells are actually coated with these materials and uh, you have sulfuric acid and the sulfuric acid actually uh, dilute and uh, dissolute and it's actually generate this electricity and elect uh, electrons pass through that right that's how the battery actually works right so oh, shortly that's how the battery actually works right um yeah so battery even though we call it as a battery it's not a single battery it's a single battery but a single battery is actually made out of these uh, cells right these cells so each cell has to be properly maintained in order for battery to be working properly right so uh, battery's capacity right battery capacity we usually call it as 12 volts and everything but uh, there are two other important capacity ratings for this right capacity ratings for these we'll discuss them later uh, later means next so the um, uh, batteries uh, how much of volt or how much current it can hold and everything actually depends on the area of the plates in contact with the electrode quantity and specific gravity of the electrolyte and the type of separator so by changing these things the uh, quality and the capacity can be changed that's why in some cases you might have seen the 45 ampere hour battery and the 65 ampere hour battery seems to be in the same cases because these uh, some of these uh, other two like right, these two can be changed but the size is almost the same but it's just an example uh, only so batteries are usually made with plastic you know that right plastic casing is there just uh, just holding everything inside uh yeah batteries actually uh, have these two important ratings as i told you earlier so they actually gives an idea about these capacities so these are actually developed by the society of automotive engineers or sae and the battery council international so bci so uh, the main two important uh, ratings are the reserve capacity rating and the cold cranking uh, rating so let us see what are these uh, so reserve capacity rating is the time needed to lower battery terminal voltage below 10.2 voltage or 1.7 volt per cell that at discharging a rate of 25 amps right so for example uh, if a battery rated at 90 minutes right the charge charging time fails the operator has approximately 90 minutes half of driving time under minimum electrical load before the battery goes completely dead now do you understand why why this is important right so the importance actually comes if the charging system is not working how much of time the electrical system can actually uh, provide it Current. that's what the reserve capacity is important so what it means is how much of time it's actually cons, uh, taken to reduce the voltage from 12 to 10.2 volt right 10.2 volts right but to measure this we have this uh, Step. So to measure that this from 10.2 volt, 1.7 per cell, 1.7 into 6 is 10.2 at a discharge rate of a discharge rate of uh, 25 amps. So as the example say, if the battery is rated at 90 minutes, a vehicle can actually drive for 90 minutes under the minimum electrical load before the battery goes up. So minimum electrical load usually considered as 25 amps per vehicle. So when the vehicle is running, the minimum electrical load, minimum electrical loads includes, that includes the usual running components and forget everything like 
ac o any uh, stereo stereos and everything will be turned off only the main important parts will be actually running you have to understand if the electrical system is not properly running or the charging system is not properly running at that time the charge light will be turned on so the driver actually knows the charging system is not properly working so in that case he or she should take action to uh, turn off the uh, turn off all the uh, additional or uh, important uh, non required components from the vehicle i actually have the experience of this and i think i actually drove more oh, yeah one and a half two hours or something like this uh, yeah, after this electrical system or the charging system failed after the charging system failed i ended up actually driving around two hours so the time vehicle to vehicle this uh, minimum electrical load is changing so that could also change so this is for 25 amps only next one is cold cranking rating so this is important for these uh, cold temperature so the colder the temperature the higher the amount of current needed for engine to be crank right so that's why this cold cranking current is there so cold cranking rating determines how much of current in amperes the battery can deliver for 30 seconds right 30 seconds at zero fahrenheit right while maintaining the the terminal voltage of 7.2 volts or 1.2 volts per cell right 1.2 volts per cell so that's the minimum voltage right minimum voltage for example manufacturer recommends a battery at 3 3 or 5 crolling crank ampere for most of the but a 450 cold amp cranking amp battery for larger v8 tank the more powerful battery is needed to handle the heavy start a current drawn from of the larger engine so so the cold crank amperes means how much is the maximum current right maximum current it can actually deliver for 30 seconds while maintaining the lowest terminal voltage of 7.2 right so this 30 seconds at 0 degrees fahrenheit that means the lowest temperature not lowest like uh, 0 degrees fahrenheit means 0 degrees celsius right so for a country like us it's not even important because we never go to 0 fahrenheit but um, there are countries actually have these issues like western countries then europe and uh, countries like that actually have this problem so for them this is a very important measure right this is a very important measure so it's actually provided with the based on the vehicle they provided how much of cold crank amperes needed minimum so higher the cold crank amperes uh, you have uh, more time to actually try in case of the first time when the engine did not start especially in a cold condition you can actually try more than one or two or three times to actually start the engine so uh, next we move into this battery charging part so this part we didn't actually discuss in your charging or system electrical or practical part also so to match check the battery charging or how much how the uh, condition of the battery we usually use a hydrometer right hydrometer hydrometer reading should not be actually go below than 1.265 specific gravity right 1.65 specific gravity right so this 80 degrees means around 25 celsius yeah around 25 celsius but uh, if it is less than that at around this temperature we need to actually uh, recharge the battery right so Uh, for charging the battery we actually use usually the ac plug in type battery chargers usually around uh, give so for a 12 volts battery we actually provide like 14.3 14.4 anyway between 14 and 15 uh, volts we actually provide so there are two types of charging systems available one is slow charging and the other one is fast charging so slow charger is actually uh, also known as trickle charge right also known as a trickle charger so the trickle charger means a very small amount of current is always giving into the 
battery and uh, keep the battery top up at all times right so this takes like long time right very long time very long time and uh, uh, this system is used for long term storage of vehicles if there are long uh, long term storage of vehicles this is being practiced very much right fast charging means the usual uh, uh, charging that we do day to day we take the battery and ask someone to do the charging so this is actually called called as the fast charge right so uh, it should not actually exceeds like uh, 35 mps and uh, uh, also the temperature has to be monitored which you should we don't do but temperature should be monitored is around 125 degrees 125 degrees is around 40 centigrade right so it should not be going beyond that uh, usually we don't measure if it is not if the electrical charging uh, current is less than 35 amps then the, there's very low possibility of the fast charging or the uh, temperature goes beyond this fahrenheit temperature as well uh yes uh, then uh, we need to discuss about the battery test some of the tests we actually discuss in practicals as well so the first one is standalone test uh, check the battery voltage between the terminals that's usual how much voltage should be there so uh, ideal case it should be 12 but it's always more than 12 usually it's around 30 right usually it's around 30 but if it is less than uh, 10 you always need to service it right it's always needed servicing right then uh, we have battery charging service test we have a special equipment for that right a special equipment for that uh, but uh, uh, but uh, we can also do it with the battery as well right battery as well sorry voltmeter as well to just check how much is uh, what is the charging at that particular point so what we do is we just use a voltmeter and connect it to the battery in the proper manner that means parallel right and see how much how the charging is so charging of a vehicle so charging should be around 14 volts right 14 14.2 is the ideal uh, temperature voltage as i told you earlier uh, if uh, when the vehicle is turned on when the vehicle is running the voltage should be read around 14.2 right and it should be maintained around 14 point should it not be go beyond or lower right if should not be going beyond or lower if it is especially if it is lower than 13 voltage right the system the whole uh, electrical system or the charging system actually need uh, repair Right, charging system actually need to be repaired. Um, so there are some, so in case of vehicle battery drain without a reason, a very simple test is there. What we do is we actually test, uh, put the turn off everything, right? Turn off everything and uh, take the key out. Then we do a drain test, battery draining test. How do we do this uh, is uh, we just take out one of the terminals it could be positive or negative then connect uh, uh, um, then we connect a meter right a meter or a multimeter or something to measure how much of current drop right so this current should be less than one ampere one, one ampere is also bit higher it should be in milliampere values if it is or oh, in ampere values that means a uh, system is or oh, the vehicle is having too much current or oh, something is wrong in the electrical system so you should be uh, checking all the electrical connections which may take some time right this uh, which may take some time and the other thing is you, you should not actually turn on the engine during this uh, or try to start the engine during this uh, test because very high current will be passing through this uh, emitter causing it to damage 
next uh, yeah as i told you i would like to actually discuss about this part now so this is related to the wiring right wire so i understand that you guys have already learned about the wiring in um, like house wiring and all in the electrical module uh, last semester i think but um, when it comes to automobile or vehicle wiring there's not much of a difference between them. there's not a huge difference between that uh, similar sort of arrangement is there but uh, especially equipments and smaller wire and smaller voltage and dc voltage or dc current is actually passed through right so we actually for in the vehicles we usually don't use these uh, mccbs so uh, miniature circuit breakers we don't have that circuit breaker option it's available it's available but it's too expensive to be used in uh, commercial vehicles it can be uh, found but not coming in most of the vehicle so still we use this uh, trusted fuse system right trusted fuse system so generally rated to up to like uh, uh, 32 amperes we usually use fuses right so as i told you earlier the power or the electrical systems from the battery main uh, line comes up to the fuse box from the fuse box it's actually uh, distributed among into the other components of the vehicle so there are two types of fuses use the blade type and the glass type at the moment nowadays the glass type is not in use the most common type is the blade type one actually shown here right this is the uh, glass type right this is the most common type of uh, fuses used at the moment in vehicle so these fuses are also come in different size and shapes usually called as micro 2 micro 3 lp mini mini regular and maxi maxi is the largest one so largest one is uh, goes up to right uh, 100 amps something like that but usually for vehicles it comes up to mini and regular usually comes with mini and regular are the most uh, common types so the one advantage of this type of fuses are these are cheap and a very uh, small amount of space is needed and uh, and actually very good right very good comparing to the glass type uh, these are very um, user friendly for a uh, vehicle right uh, so you can see the dimensions and the other details of these how much of current it can be sent through usually uh, what's the maximum amount of current that can be passed through if it is more than that the fuse will be blown so that means there's a small uh, pin sort of there's a small connection between these two these will be actually broken in half okay so you can see them clearly here so this is the fuse actually this part is the fuse so this is the box so the body of the fuse and this is the middle one is the fuse right so <clears throat> these are the types of fuse so sorry so uh, and you can actually see these fuses actually have like different colors the reason for that is to identify them right to identify them so uh, this is how the uh, color coding actually comes with the color coding actually can have to do with this uh, how much of current is supposed to actually pass through them so dark blue uh, 0.5 amperes for micro s micro 2 micro 3 mini lp and all these three types right rest of uh, rest of them are different um so you you guys can actually go through this and read but uh, there are in the maxi one is only there are two differences for these two like uh, 25 amps and the uh, 35 amps these actually have two different other colors that's why it's actually mentioned here um other one the previous one i told you is actually the last uh fuse type uh, in uh, last fuse type uh fuses uh, this is the one actually 
call them uh, currently not in use so very popular in the indian vehicles and north american vehicles special uh, others also used but uh, they actually dropped this very long time ago a uh, very actually long time ago the other important component for a vehicle electrical system is the relay system right so relay system allow us to control sorry so electrical relay system actually allowed uh, allow us to control a uh, sort of like a as uh, another circuit with a smaller or a primary circuit so primary circuits actually so in this case you can see over here i know you guys know how relay works but i'll just give you a brief explanation so here the 9 volt battery is here right 9 volt battery is here So nine volt battery is actually here, and we have a lamp. Right, lamp is connected to two hundred and thirty volts. Instead of touching this two hundred and thirty voltage connections, what we have is a relay here. This part is the relay. So once we energize, so once we switch on this, I switch or disconnect this one. What actually happens is the power or the electricity transfer. flows through the circuit and energize the coil over here which generate a magnetism or electromagnetic actuation which turn this switch from this position to other position which is this one like this right which as uh, which turn on this lamp inversely which will turn on the lamp because now this circuit is complete so power will actually transfer to that right so these uh, relays actually comes in various shapes sizes and function right so this is just a one image to show how these actually looks how this actually looks so uh this image this image actually show you what are the types of uh, relays available so you have single pole uh, single throw then we have single pole double throw right then we have double pole single throw and we have double pole double throw right so these are four types of um, uh, ones available so d means double and p means pole t means throw s means single right so that's how we actually read this just knowing this may be important uh, this this uh, sort of a diagram is actually available over here right over here and it identify which pin is going where so this one actually have 1 2 3 4 5 five numbers and each number is going into or oh, i uh, one of these pins over here or oh, one side of this actually mentions where each one is going we are buying a relay from after markets is actually mentioned right it's actually mentioned if it is a manufactured versions like oem components is not actually mentioned we need to find it by doing a small test it's not that hard at all now for now yeah so if we look at uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry so these uh, relays are actually known as electromechanical relays what actually happens here is uh, uh, as i told you here it uh, sorry so uh, electromechanical relays right so there is a spring loaded actuator and uh, this electromagnetic coil uh, uh, attract the mobile armature and conduct these two point which turn this section 
and send the power through this load line. So that's what actually happens in a usual um, relay. I already explained this, right? So these contact points and everything is actually we have to see. Just to actually identify whether the relay is working or not, we can actually like turn on and turn off the switch and listen to the noise of these contact points uh, contacting that actually make like a clicking noise. So that's enough to actually understand whether this is working or not in most cases. I right? think most cases it's more than enough. Uh, then the other part necessary for an automotive electrical system is uh, the automotive wire, right? Automotive wire. So automotive wires are uh, not that much different from the other uh, wires, the only difference is their insulation is somewhat robust to uh, withstand the harsh conditions in the vehicle, such as engine bay with the high temperatures they, are, they have to meet every day, right? So primary wires that we use in automobile electrical wiring is known as, uh, uh, actually known as the uh, GPT wires, right? GPT wires. These are most common wires in auto stores. Uh, general purpose uh, wiring actually is. So these can actually stand up to like uh, 105 Celsius sort of thing. So that's more than enough to actually be, uh, run or work in the engine compartments and uh, not being damaged by these electrical or the chemicals and acids also help for these to properly run. Um, in other, so this is the general purpose wire, but there's another wire type called as motor wire. Difference is actually these have like a finer, uh, uh, finer strands of wire, finer strands of wire, which actually used to send the electricity for uh, uh, very important or like sort of uh, sensors and actuators actually use this type of wiring because of the fine grade and good uh, electricity connection between these wires, right? Uh, similarly, these also have a similar um, insulation so they can actually withstand, uh, withstand a lot of um, resist, a lot of outside uh, things. And uh, additionally, these go up to around 600 volts. So they are more than capable of handling that uh, sensors and actuators. One important uh, component of the electrical system of the vehicle is this battery wire, right? Or battery cable, right? Battery cable is actually somewhat different from the rest of the uh, cables or wire types used in the vehicle. So this is, seems to have like the most uh, um, pure sort of uh, copper. Right, most pure sort of copper, and this is a large gauge heavy wire which very low resistance. So the voltage drop will be very low when it's actually turning the starter motor. And since they have very high cross sectional area, resistance is lower, and the voltage drop is lower, the temperature produced is lower. So it need to have this particular type of wire. Right? It's a very important fact. And uh, these are actually expensive. And also they actually started to corrode very fast. That's the that's due to this type of wires. So since these wires are actually designed or how do you say this? Or to be like, um, since they need to have very low uh, voltage drop in them, these actually have very high, um, sorry, there's not much of, uh, additions were done to this material to keep it very good. So uh, electrical transferring to be very well, right? So as a result of this, they started to actually corrode from inside, right? Where you can't unfortunately see. So usually these, uh, if you consider about these wirings in a vehicle, wiring is actually run in a similar pattern to this, right? So the, here it's shown a car, compared with other vehicles, cars are a bit complicated because 
the instru instrument panel is behind the engine and everything so batteries in some air some vehicles batteries even in the back of the vehicle right back of the vehicle so each of these bat wires represent a certain uh, certain circuit or certain components for example the red line right red lights red lines are actually the front lights right and these yellow lines are actually for the uh, this seems to be the dome lights, right? These are the dome lights, right? And the blue are the accessories and the other components and tray, tray lights, uh, sorry, tail lights, right? So that's what actually mentioned here. Usually for a vehicle like cars, uh, the wiring is always run, you know, one side of the vehicle. It's not running in the middle or it's usually runs inside of the vehicle. The reason for that is for maintenance. Right for maintenance and usually these uh, uh, instrument, sorry, uh, fuse boxes and uh, the fuse box or the distribution boxes will be fixed in near to these uh, instrument cluster and it will be always near to one side of the vehicle. So uh, to reduce the amount of wires used to and to make it uh, easy for maintenance and all always one side only used for running the wire right not both sides on both sides that's a general rule usually used in the vehicle um so there are connectors now then when we have this much of wires right so these are actually wire harnesses we call these as wire harnesses so these are complaint so this is not a one single circuit it does not mean this this yellow line does not mean this just one single circuit it could be two or three circuits together but uh, they have one set of wires going and uh, doing certain functions so those are actually known as wire harnesses. So to connect these, we have special electrical connectors for vehicles alone, like vehicles alone. So right. So these electrical connections has to withstand the heat, the weather, and the vibrations and oils and everything. So they are have supposed to be specially designed. Like material and everything has to be specifically designed. So uh, each uh, manufacturer to manufacturer also these are different, right? These are different. So, anyways, there are like few main types of connectors available as seen here. You can see here A B C group and D group is there. So each type of connectors actually have different shapes based on the number of uh, pins necessary these actually have uh, these sort of things so here the main thing you have to understand is this one actually given for only for the audio connectors only for the audio connectors. this audio connectors is a standard connection right standard connector the reason being uh, different manufacturers um, put same audio types and uh, it has to be adapted with other audio uh, units as well to fix that these actually have this uh, these actually have this ISO or standard uh, connectors but other connectors even the fuses even the some components do have but uh, most of the components actually do not have any uh, standards until recent right so if you look at here there are two images left and right so if we start from the left one left one actually shows the different types of uh, 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 different types of um, uh, sorry different types of connectors used by the manufacturer used by the manufacturer so different manufacturers different types of connectors for example the toyota one and these volkswagen connectors are very different right very different so this seems to be very simple compared to this complicated version even the bmw right so similarly uh, this ford version right? this ford version but nowadays the, almost all of these manufacturers are trying to adapt to this type of connector right so this type of connectors actually provide additional uh, benefits 
main uh, important benefits of these keys these are actually watertight these are actually watertight right so most of these are actually watertight so for example this one you can see like a rubber seal going around these are actually watertight so these are not exactly these are not exactly having a watertight uh, connection is important and uh, one main importance of that is uh, the rusting or not rusting actually corrosion could be stopped corrosion could be actually stopped and in addition to that uh, you can see they uh, most of these actually have a locking pin which these do not have with the time to time when you are assembling and disassembling these tend to actually lose where these actually uh, going to keep its integrity as much as possible uh, with that the discussion regarding the connection and wiring and everything is also done so with this i am actually done with your pictures right so additional reading components also included here you guys can actually look into this the wiring almost the whole wiring part is actually covered here i hope you will be interested if you are interested i uh, highly recommend you to go through them it will be very important for you so with that we are done with the lecture so